So what I thought I would do in this uh, particular video is really hopefully hone in on the the difference between what I call slumlord quality and pride of ownership quality. And I don't know about you, but I think I think words are great, but pictures are better. So I thought I would take a look through five or six different sort of before and afters or samples of what a slumlord property would look like uh, versus a pride of ownership. So when you look at you know different investment options or properties that I'm producing, you could have a, an understanding of what of what I'm trying to produce uh, and make available for you. So again, we're going to go through a set of pictures. I think uh, I've ordered it to look and discuss the slumlord quality first, sort of look at, discuss, point at, highlight, and then uh, next will be the, the pride of ownership. We'll go through different sections. We'll look at the outside. We'll look at the kitchens, bathrooms, living room, and, and a bedroom, I believe, are the, are the samples I, I put together. Then we'll sort of step back and we'll go, okay, well, why would someone buy a slumlord you know, quality property? Obviously, I'm doing it and, and, and others do it all the time. So we'll, we'll sort of talk about why someone would want to do that. And then we'll sort of close with why you might want to consider buying a pride of ownership property. Um, obviously, pride of ownership costs more. Uh, there's no question. Uh, but there are some reasons where it might make sense for you as an investor. So let's get started. So I thought we'd start with the outside. This is a picture uh, of a property. Uh, I have in uh, Madera, California. You can just see it's really run down. It's actually got lovely Christmas lights there. Um, that porch area roof needs to be entirely replaced. It uh, it's actually has holes you can see through it. Uh, the entire house needs to be painted, um, you know, patched, new fascia. Um, you know, there's probably, I don't know, $8,000 to $10,000 in, in exterior work. Not to mention, um, right now, what, what's not in the picture is there's a fence uh, which is really made up of chicken wire, where uh, in a pride of ownership, uh, depending on the area, it would either be a new chain link fence, or if it's in a nice area, it could even be wrought iron, right? There's lots of curb appeal things that um, that could be interesting or, or looked at. For example, here's a sample after. You can see that this happens to be a different house because the other one is still in process, but it really started in the same condition. This house might even have been in worse condition. It's completely repainted, lots of new stucco. Uh, you can see garages in the back have gotten equal treatment. We've created defined areas there with the fence. Uh, I would point out to the left of the car there, uh, that was something we added. Uh, the house to the left actually had a couple of dogs that you know like to bark. They weren't really threatening or anything, but they like to bark. So what we did is we, we in, in order to stay with our mode of pride of ownership, we installed a six foot fence that's probably 70 feet long. It was almost $3,000. Uh, and those are privacy slats that you see in there. Uh, so we're, we're hiding that uh, and hopefully reducing the, the barking dogs and, and noise. But again, um, and also we've created a defined space for the tenants. This one's a duplex, happens to have a front yard here, and to the rear of the house is a backyard. Uh, so the families have their defined space. So again, up and to the left is uh, slumlord quality, you know, you know, I guess still functional, I guess. Uh, but pride of ownership just stands out uh, in, in lots of different ways. So the kitchen. Wow. Well, I don't know what to say. Flooring sucks. Cabinets suck. Stuff's broken. You know, it hasn't been addressed. Leaks, you know. Peeling, you know, that's actually the stick em tile stuff. It's just uh, just not a good look, right? It's um, and, and it's embarrassing to say, but lots of people live that way. This, this particular house had a rental tenant in it. Um, they were probably moved out a week. Uh, when this picture was taken. So they were, I didn't do anything to it. So they were living like this. Um, and I would call that a, a slumlord quality. That's, that frankly is embarrassing. Uh, you can actually see one of the cabinets is broken off. It's just, it really upsets me. But, you know, here's a, here's a sample of a kitchen when, when I'm done with it. Uh, you know, start from the floor, right? All new flooring. Um, we're not doing the little square stickums. We're, we're, um, you know, we're doing, uh, it looks like wood there. Uh, brand new cabinets, uh, new uh, silver doorknob, or you know, I don't know what you call those, jewelry, I guess. Undermount sinks to help prevent uh, leaks and whatnot. New faucets. Uh, we actually added a, a range um, vent there. Uh, and then, of course, we'll move in a new stove. A new stove, right? New stove, uh, as opposed to you know what to the left was a used stove, clearly. And new refrigerator. So it's just it's just different, right? It's, it's, it's um, you know, the quality that, frankly, I, you know, you know, maybe you know, something that would be where I live, right? Feel good about it. That's really the definition of pride of ownership, right there, right? You're gonna you're gonna have something that um, 
you don't mind having in your inventory versus to the left it's you know how long can i band they to band-aid that together and ask someone to pay rent it's just upsetting here's a bathroom this is actually not the worst i've seen right it's probably still functional uh, but that's just one sheet of long stickum tile down there uh, old mismatched tub to the right there's a shower you can see one of the tiles is cracked old toilet just this weird green color um, you know this is uh, you know, some lower quality bathrooms go it's not horrible I've again seen a lot worse but it's again something that's like uh, not something that I want to produce and, and call and be proud of owning where in this case right you know you have everything's new uh, you've tiled the, um, the shower you've you know in this case put in a new window you put in a new vanity with mirror and lights and you know you added the towel the little, little jewelry and, and, and new new flooring in this case it would have been tile on the floor plus a new toilet uh, also added a little accent wall on the tile there right so that's that's you know pride of ownership quality that you could be happy to sort of have in your portfolio let's look at a bedroom this is um, again this is that house that had a tenant living in it um, it's disgusting that somebody was paying rent to live like this um, the floor is um, destroyed walls beat to nothing popcorn ceiling sort of half stripped up top just again uh, upsetting and, and um, just not okay and then you know here's a bedroom when I'm done with it it's got brand new carpet right bedrooms have carpet where the rest of the house will have uh, either tile or the the linoleum that looks like wood we've taken the time to paint the baseboards uh, a different color for some accent put in new windows blinds uh, we've added a ceiling fan right Fresno and or Madeira in this case is hot uh, so we're doing all we can to keep different rooms individually cool uh, in this case it's a brand new fan with light and, and the like so just vastly different I think you can agree and um, that's that's again an example of pride of ownership so when we talk about the living room right again this is an example of a living room happens so just a touch of the kitchen uh, but you can see off to the left there's a destroyed wall heater that's um, probably hasn't worked in years you can see flooring just just probably hasn't been addressed in a decade or more uh, the room is just filthy uh, discoloration everywhere the ceiling fan actually doesn't even work uh, that you see there and um, again people were actually paying rent um, to live here and you know this is an example of what it might look like when it's done right brand new wall heater brand new flooring again done the two-tone accents with the baseboards new light fixtures new ceiling fan and um, you know you can see that the the floor is continued into the next room there so again just a just a totally different feel so why would somebody buy some more quality? Um, you know, it's it means you could brag about how cheap you bought something, right? That's one reason, right? You know, one of the houses that, uh, for example, I bought as a slow more quality, I think we got for let's call it eighty thousand dollars. But after you spend thirty or forty grand, and you add on your profit, you, you're selling it for one sixty, right? Are you the type of person that likes to talk about, hey, I bought a property for eighty grand? Well, congratulations, you bought a property. You not only probably have to pay cash for but then you have to you know spend forty thousand dollars on or do you want to go hey I bought a pride of ownership property got FHA financing uh, now have five percent debt on it and I'm good to go long term um, I would argue for a full-time employer you want the pride of ownership but if you live in the area and you have nothing else to do um, you know like myself right, pride of ownership or buying slumlords you know not a bad option there's some sweat equity, right? Obviously, I'm finding ways to squeeze out a little bit of profit uh, by taking a slumlord property and converting it to pride of ownership. Right, I'm getting a little bit of an uplift. It's not as much as lots of people think, but it's it's enough for me to keep doing it and, and stay busy and keep helping people. Um, but again, it's um, you know, it's 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 one option. <coughs> Excuse me. You need time. You need a team. And frankly, you need a high risk tolerance because um, lots of these slumlord prop, uh, properties have, I don't know, I guess I'll call them unexpected or unplanned for surprises. And uh, a surprise in a slumlord property is never good, right? It, it ranges between five, eight, and ten thousand dollars surprises, right? I, I just wait for them, and they can be expensive, um, and they can delay time, and 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 right? It's it's um, you know, you're buying a property that's that's probably been band-aided for a decade. 
right? That the last owner or the last several owners have not done any real remodeling to it for a decade. They just kept slapping new coats of paint and hoping nobody cared. Um, you saw the pictures. It's it's bad. Uh, buying a slumlord property is not for everyone. Uh, frankly, um, I would hope slumlord properties scare most people, at least most people with full-time jobs, because it's a... Uh, it's a, it's a full-time job to address and look after. Uh, if, you know, if time's your constraint, I suggest avoiding these and because they're, it's only going to stress you out. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not something you could do one hour a day or five hours a week or something like that. Um, lastly, I do get a kick um, out of turning slumlord properties that were frankly unsafe or un, in many cases near uninhabitable into pride of ownership. Right, That's... Um, you know, something above and beyond a couple of dollars that I make on these properties. Uh, I do like going to them, seeing them in their worst shape, and then walking them through to ultimately to uh, completion. I get a kick out of that. So why would you buy pride of ownership? Well, frankly, you get to finance what I'll call legacy repair costs, right? If you're buying a pride of ownership property, the person you're buying it from, if you buy from me or from others, probably spent 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 grand in some cases. And they did that with cash. Right. They probably bought the property with cash. They certainly did the repairs with cash. But what you get to do is by buying pride of ownership is you get to finance all of that. Right. You get to bring in 20, 25, 30, 35% down, and then you're done. Right. You calculate your return and you're good to go. You don't need that extra 10, 15, 20 grand to do all the repairs. So it's um far more efficient use of capital to buy a pride of ownership. It's the lowest stress. You sort of set it, forget it. A lot of landlording, when you buy a property that's slumlording, freaks people out. It takes months, weeks, multiple repair cycles. Um, you know, then you're debating: Do I band-aid this for you know a thousand dollars, or do I replace it new for three thousand? Uh, it's it can get overwhelming, and um, you know it's it's the unfortunate thing that you know if you you have one of those properties first, you you may never buy a second. However, if you buy pride of ownership. It's already had all the work done, and you just sort of set it, forget it with fixed fi rate financing. It's pretty low stress. Uh, likely, the property is leased at market. You don't have to play the game of, oh gosh, do I go and raise the rent fifty or hundred or two hundred dollars? What happens if they leave? Oh my God, do I have to repair the unit? And oh my God, oh my God. Um, you know, by having a pride of ownership property that's been turned, it's leased at market. You don't you don't need to worry about that that extra headache or risk. Again, I like to say it's set it, forget it, uh, at least in the short term. Right. You know, it's still property. You know, tenants are still people. Stuff still happens. Um, but you're not going to be making tough decisions those first couple of months. Uh, minimum. Right. If not the first couple of years, uh, because once you're moved into a pride of ownership property as a tenant, you're going to want to stay there because uh, as you'll see, the, the quality out there is nothing, nothing close to what we're producing. Extremely low risk. Right. The only thing you need to calculate going in is how much down payment do you have to do to make sure it's not an alligator. Right. Just because your bank will loan you 80 um, percent, I don't want you buying that, you know, if it's going to produce an alligator, which is your expenses are greater than your uh, income. So in many cases in this seller's market where properties are increasing, you're probably going to have to put 30 to 40 percent down, uh, depending on length of loan. Is it 15 year or 30 year? What the interest rate is? Um, but again, that's really the only decision you have to make. And again, I would I would consider that extra down payment just repair costs. Right, so where a slumlord property, if you could get financing, which you couldn't, let's just say you were going to put 25% down, where in a pride of ownership you have to put 35 or 40% down, it's really the same down payment plus the repair costs. So it's really the same uh, level of cash, except you have a much better asset when it's all said and done. Uh, doesn't consume a lot of time, right? If you're a busy full time employee, travel a lot, uh, busy family life, um, pride of ownership is the only way to go. Uh, certainly in the beginning, right? If you get a couple of private of ownerships under your belt, you know, three, four, five, and two years down the line, you want to take your shot at a slumlord one, by all means, go for it. But uh, I suggest not starting there. Um, if you really sort of look at the best return on time, um, buying private ownership is without question the best return on time for a busy professional, not only in acquisition time, but also in, in weekly, monthly uh, quarterly sort of management and, and things you have to think about. It really is a set it, forget it uh, kind of thing. So hopefully that made sense to you. Those uh, those pictures uh, were relevant. Hopefully, uh, if you have any questions about the before and afters or slumlord versus pride of ownership, let me know. Uh, the videos before this one actually um, talk about some single family homes that I'm bringing to market with pride of ownership. Uh, and another video is about some multifamilies that I'm bringing to market with pride of ownership. So 
Uh, let me know if you have interest or questions. Uh, there's my email there at the bottom of this slide, and have a great day.